stacked against Illinois to enter the day. 24 straight losses to ranked teams dating all the way back to 2011. The Illini haven't beat a top 10 team since 2007 on that fateful day when number one Ohio State went down in Columbus. But ah, that's why they play the game, right? Illinois, 31 point underdogs against six ranked Wisconsin. The Badgers have not trailed in a game so far this season. And Brandon Peters back under center after missing last game with a concussion. He cleared protocol. He was ready to go. But it's the Badgers taking the first lead. 18 yard pass. Jack Cohn to Jake Ferguson. The tight end puts the Badgers up. But here comes Brandon Peters hitting a, up with the walk-on wide receiver. Donnie Navarro playing in place of Trayvon Sidney. Cuts the lead to three. It's the first first-half touchdown. UW has allowed all season 13-7 at half after a couple of Wisconsin field goals. Then Jonathan Taylor, the Heisman candidate, gets going 20-7. to At this point, it looked like the Badgers might pull away. But here comes Reggie Corbin doing what he does best, and that's breaking off some big runs 43 yard touchdown scamper 20 to 14 Illinois pulls within six yep thank you very much and they have a fighting chance the crowd getting into it as well then Brandon Peters eluding pressure pinpoint pass to Josh Imator Bebe 23 21 and the crowd going nuts they were into this feeling upset turnover has been a huge thing for Illinois all year and they do it again Tony Adams starts at cornerback today from safety. Mikey Dudek loves that. He was jacked up on the sideline. This was just 242 left with the turnover. Lovey Smith ends up calling timeout. They're in a perfect position for a field goal if James McCourt can hit it. 39 yards out, ball game. That is it as Illinois walks off the field, a winner upsetting number six, Wisconsin. 24-23, the final the statement win for Lovey Smith and the Alana, who snap a four-game losing streak in the process. Illinois scored 17 points in the final 16 minutes to snap that 24-game losing streak against ranked opponents. Now three and four on the season, one and three in the Big Ten. And let's go right back out to Memorial Stadium, where WCI 3's Craig Schott standing by live. It's getting dark there now, Craig. I assume there's probably still some tailgaters out there. You were in the middle of that huge Illini fan <laughs> scrum in the middle of the field. Take us into that. What was that like for the players and coaches? Oh, man, that was, uh, if you remember, about six months ago, there was another scrum like that just to my left at the State Farm Center. I was also in the middle of that one when they beat Michigan State, but this one, a uh, football stadium compared to a basketball arena, no comparison. That 100 yards goal line to goal line was full of orange and blue and when we're the photographers we're one of the first out there because we're right on the sideline and we go in and uh, uh, let's just say I didn't play football for a reason because those guys were big and they were bumping people around but it was just an amazing atmosphere to see the joy on these players faces there were some tears I saw specifically Io Shagbanyo when he hugged Josh Whitman there were tears in his face so this win means a lot to this program it's a win that they have been looking for and Levy Smith addressed that early in his press conference uh, this afternoon after the ball game saying this is the win that they needed this is our signature win we've needed a signature win um, we're getting number six team in the country um, and we played them toe-to-toe -to -toe, and uh, we saw so much fight we learned a lot an awful lot about ourselves so uh, we're pumped up we one of the best wins you know, you could possibly have at this stage of our program. Honestly, I think going through my head was some oxygen because I was passed out at the bottom of the pile. Supposedly, uh, Jake Cerny saw my eyes roll back in my head. So I got, I, got, I got lifted up, and I really I thought I woke up from a dream or something. It was unbelievable. Just seeing everyone around, you know, I uh, can't, can't even describe it. My mindset was, holy hell. Uh, like, this, this is a situation that, like, movies are made out of, like, last second, like, field goal to win the game against the number six team of the country, you know? Like, that's the stuff where, like, I was told as a recruit we're going to do that, and <laughs> we just did that. It's amazing. It's amazing because uh, we deserve it. I mean, like Reggie told us at halftime, like, this is our stadium. We put the work in. We was out here running them bleachers while everybody else in this uh, uh, campus was partying. We was out in here Friday nights working. We deserve it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I mean, if there was one game on the schedule out of the 12 that I thought Illinois didn't really have a chance at all, less than 5%, it was this one. So not many people expecting the win today. That includes myself, but that's why they play the games. This is building a lot of momentum for the rest of the year, only needing three more wins now to get to that six and that bowl game. Brett. 
All right, Craig, we got about 20 seconds here. Just real quick, what'd you get from the players about momentum moving forward now and how they can maybe turn the corner from this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Nebraska loss and the Eastern Michigan loss hurt, but this win makes up for it. Um, they say that this is the team that, that they know they can be. They showed it in the second half last week. Now they've beaten the number six team in the country, and this was the toughest team they were going to play. So the schedule does lighten up a bit. There are three winnable games on the schedule. They think they can go get those three. All right, Craig, look for more on WCIA.com. We'll have more at 10 as well. Good night.